In 2021, Ford lost nearly a billion dollars in EV sales. And last year, despite all the market hype around the Ford F-150 Lightning, Ford lost another 2.1 billion in EV sales. You'd think that's bad. It's only getting worse because this year Ford expects to lose yet another $3 billion. Today we're looking at why Ford is bleeding out money and what this means for the future of the company and whether Henry Ford is rolling over in his grave. We'll also see why Ford restructured its company with a new financial reporting structure in recent times. Regardless of whether you're a diehard Ford fan or not, you'll want to watch this because, believe it or not, this involves your tax dollars too. Here's the thing. Ford Motor Company is an iconic American company and car giant that's 120 years old. Last year, Ford CEO Jim Farley restructured the company. Basically, he carved out and separated the company's EV business from its gas and diesel engine businesses. Now you can view Ford by three divisions or pillars. There's Ford Model E, which is its EV business. Then there's Ford Blue, which is a division that sells international combustion engine vehicles. And lastly, there's Ford Pro, which is its commercial vehicle division that sells both combustion engine vehicles and electric vehicles. In the past, Ford used to report its profit by regions, but now the company is reporting profits separately for each of its three business divisions. The intent behind the decision was to give Ford the extra push it needs in fast-growing battery-powered EV markets. Funnily enough, before the structuring was announced, not all analysts were on board. Some on Wall Street urged Ford to actually spin off its EV business, but Farley and other high execs at Ford pushed back. They said that keeping its EV unit in-house would enable Ford to leverage the manufacturing expertise and other existing strengths from its Ford Blue and Ford Pro divisions. In fact, this is what will give the company an edge over EV startups that need to create their own manufacturing base from scratch. To me, this makes sense. Why build from scratch when you can draw from what you already have? When it comes to the Ford Model E, things aren't looking very good. Several weeks ago, Ford announced that it expects to lose a whopping $3 billion on EVs this year. Currently, North America is Ford's largest market. Right now, Ford sells three electric models on this continent. The F-150 Lightning pickup truck, the E-Transit plug-in cargo van, and the Mustang Mach-E SUV. The obvious question on many consumers' minds is, why is Ford expecting to lose so much money this year? And that's a good question, especially when you consider all the hype, positive press, and popularity votes that the F-150 Lightning got. But you forget one thing, growing pains. Ford as a company has been around for more than a century, but the EV business is a new beast. That's why Ford is pretty much taken on the mentality of an EV startup. Ford CFO John Lawler himself said that Ford EV's division is basically a startup inside a 119 year old company. Here's the thing about startups. Startups inherently need to build from the ground up. The first few years are usually rocky. It's common to lose money for quite some time before they start earning a profit. And that's why Ford isn't too surprised by the losses within its EV. EV division. In fact, Ford expects it. And it's not just Ford. Most analysts agree that EV businesses are still far away from reaching the profit level that we currently see in the traditional combustion engine car market. By the end of 2026, Ford is hoping to reach an annual production rate of 2 million electric vehicles. That's just around three years away. And that's when Ford expects its Model E business to reach an 8% operating profit margin. To put that in perspective, last year Ford's operating profit was 6.6%. Overall, Ford has a 10% operating profit margin target. But not all analysts are as optimistic as Ford is. Some analysts say it's unclear what Ford's plans are to reach its 8% operating profit margin by 2026. Just look at what happened to Tesla. Last year, Tesla's operating margin was 16.8%. That might sound impressive now, but it wasn't always that way. All the way back when Tesla first started, it was bleeding money. And it did that for over a decade before it finally started reporting consistent profits. Just how much money are we talking here? Get this. Around 2015 to 2016, Tesla was losing just about $850 million a year with operating profit margins of negative 15%. So while Tesla enjoys profit now, its early years saw heavy losses while it was investing in battery production factors factories and development of other key EV components. Right now, Ford is still in the early stages when it comes to the EV business. The question is, can Ford reach the same heights as Tesla, but faster? In a way, you might say that Ford and Tesla have something in common. Believe it or not, Tesla's inadvertently playing a part in Ford's future plans. When Ford CFO John Lawler was asked during an investor conference call about whether or not Ford would be able to hit its EV profit goals, he conveyed his confidence in Ford's projection. Part of the reason is the sheer number of ex-Tesla workers who now work at Ford. Apparently, many of the folks who designed the vehicles at Tesla are now at Ford. When they jumped ship, they brought with them their know-how, and Ford is happily leveraging all that talent. 
Now we can compare Tesla and Ford all we like. But at least for now, there's one major difference between these two car giants. Right now, the majority of Ford EVs are being pumped out of two factories. On the other hand, Tesla's pumping out EVs out of one. To clarify, Tesla has three gigafactories in the States, but the one in Nevada only makes battery packs and energy storage products like Tesla Powerwall. Giga New York, on the other hand, only makes power pack batteries, solar panels, and parts for supercharger stations. And that leaves us with Giga Texas and Austin, which is where the various Tesla models get assembled. Anyway, Ford's two key factories versus Tesla's one car assembly plant makes for a big difference, and here's where Ford has an upper hand. Ford has the capacity to sell more cars if it wants to reach Tesla's past and present profit. If you look at the hard facts, Tesla wasn't consistently making a profit until it was reaching over 400,000 models a year. Last year in 2022, Ford's electric division reported a profit loss of $2.1 billion. Evidently, Ford reported a 40% operating loss margin, having sold around 96,000 EVs. The year prior, in 2021, Ford lost $900 million in EV sales. CFO John Lawler attributed these plant losses largely to Ford's plans to increase EV production in its new EV truck plant. Not many people know this, but the Ford Mach-E played a huge part in Ford's $2 billion loss last year. Here's why. Earlier this year, Tesla cut the price of its lower-priced models in various markets across the globe. Ford followed suit and cut the price of the Mustang Mach-E, but then Ford decided to increase the production of the Mach-E. But the problem was, they ran into several unexpected production problems. So ramping up EV production became a lot more expensive than Ford initially had anticipated. For example, Ford didn't know that the wiring harness of the Mach-E was almost a mile longer than it needed to be. Ford also didn't know it was 70 pounds heavier than anticipated, which resulted in each battery costing 300 bucks above the expected cost. If that wasn't already bad enough, Ford also didn't realize that it had underinvested in braking technology to save on battery size. All these factors and other problems ultimately contributed to the $2 billion loss last year. But now let's talk about profits. Last year, Ford's Blue Division, which makes the combustion engine cars, reported an operating profit of $6.8 billion. Put that in perspective, it was double its 2021 profit, which was hit hard by the global semiconductor chip shortage. The Ford Pro Division, which makes the commercial vehicles, also did well last year. We're talking of a profit of $3.2 billion. But let's be clear, everything all said and done, Ford's expectation to lose $3 billion this year won't hurt the company. So no, Henry Ford isn't rolling over in his grave. Actually, the Ford Motor Company can afford to lose money, at least for now. Reason is, Ford's EV business loss is offset by its huge $10 billion profit from its combustion engine and fleet business. A huge chunk of its total profit comes from the famous Ford's F-Series trucks. The ironic thing, frankly, is that even though Ford works to go green, it's Ford's gas-guzzling, fossil-fuel-burning trucks that remain its most popular and profitable vehicles. But here's why you should care about Ford's $3 billion loss, even if you're not a Ford fan or shareholder. The thing is, U.S. taxpayers could end up paying more taxes if Ford keeps losing money from EVs. Here's what I mean. Think about the Inflation Reduction Act. One of its goals is to make EV production too big to fail. That's why the government is offering tax credits and subsidies. And Ford is one of the beneficiaries of it. The government will keep subsidizing or offering credits to incentivize more Americans to electrify. So whether it's directly or indirectly, Ford will still benefit from the program. So, what does the EV future look like for Ford? Ford is working to simplify its EVs and make them easier to scale. Once that happens, Ford will have a firmer standing in a future EV price war. Right now, Ford has deepened the development of its second-generation EVs, which include Ford's next-generation electric full-size pickup. It's codenamed Project T3. I'll have a separate video on that coming soon. But, in summary, the electric truck is set to succeed the F-150 Lightning. Ford intends to pump a high volume of it out on its Blue Oval plant in Tennessee. On top of that, apparently Ford's next-generation EVs will be fully software updatable. That's because Ford is dramatically simplifying its vehicle platforms. For example, it's removing some fasteners and brackets, and Ford Ford's developing a whole new electric architecture. Ford's end goal is to deliver better quality and lower manufacturing costs. Speaking of simplifying the cost cuttings, Ford also plans on offering a minimum number of available body styles or top hats for its future EVs. That's pretty smart because the less top hats a car brand offers, the less it costs the company to engineer them. It's as simple as that. Then there's the issue about batteries. Ford's strategy to stay competitive is to design the smallest possible battery. That makes sense in theory, but so far there's no concrete word on where they are with that.
Rumor also has it that Ford might electrify the Explorer SUV this year. Believe it or not, the Ford Explorer is one of the most popular SUVs sold here in the United States. In fact, back in May 2021, Ford announced its third row Explorer SUV would be joining the Mustang Mach-E and E-Transit electric van in its electric lineup. The current Explorer comes in three powertrain options. Two are traditional gas-only engines, including a turbocharged 2.3-liter four-cylinder engine and a twin-turbo 3-liter V6 that gets 400 ponies. The third powertrain option it's a 3.3 liter hybrid engine that outputs 138 horses and 322 pound feet of torque. But now you tell me, when do you think Ford's EVs unit will turn profitable? Do you think it'll outbeat Tesla, Rivian, GMC, and Chevy? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.